Hi guys, today we're going to take a look at a car lock pick. This one is made by Lishi, and this is the model HU101. And the reason I point that out is because there are a lot of different models of this pick designed for different models of cars. The HU101, I got it from lockpicks.com. This one is designed for Fords, Land Rovers, Volvos, Mazdas, and Jaguars. So this is probably the most popular model uh, that they sell because it opens such a wide variety of different cars. Before we start going over the details of the Lishi lockpick itself, let's first do a quick review on how does a car lock work. So I've got a, a practice lock also from lockpicks.com. This one's for a Ford Focus. Um, when I bought it, I had hoped that it was going to be perfectly clear so you could actually see the wafers as I was manipulating them with uh, Lishi, but unfortunately you can't. If you're picking by hand, you can look in from the side and see the wafers, so it is useful in that respect, but for the Lishi tool, we're going to be looking at it from the top. So just think of this as any car lock. Uh, it turns both ways so you'll know when it is ultimately unlocked. How does it work? Well, let's take a look at the key first. Now you notice there's cuts on this guy. They could be for wafers or they could be for sliders. In the case of the Ford Focus, they're going to be for wafers. So there's 10 cuts on the bottom and then of course you roll it over and there's 10 cuts uh, on the other side as well. You might think, well, that's a matter of convenience for the customer. That way he doesn't worry about which way the key is oriented. It slides in both ways. But in the case of these car locks, that's not necessarily true. That's not the only reason. What the key doesn't tell you is that there are wafers on both the top and the bottom, not just all on one side. And if you look in there, I think you can see, I hope the reflection is coming off of both the bottom and some on the top. There's no way to know how many of the wafers are on top and how many are on the bottom until you slide your tool in there and start to figure it out. It may be five and five. It's just impossible to say. With a key, it doesn't matter. Uh, with When we start to pick it, it certainly does. Well, how are we going to manipulate those? And so now we get back to the tool. This is the newer three-in-one tool. So we actually have two controls here. We have one control for the top wafers, and we have another control with the knob pointing down for the bottom wafers. And when we move the top one, you'll notice that there's a little wing on that control. So when I slide it back and forth, I'm actually moving either the slider or the wafer to the right. When I flip it over, and again, I'll use the bottom controller, I'm moving him to the left. So I don't have to use one control and take a chance on oversetting something because I mispositioned it. I know exactly which controller I'm using, top or bottom, left or right. So. When we take a look at the lock pick itself, it does look like some kind of pretty really complex thing, but it's really not. This little arm here is really to protect the arms while it's in its hard protective storage case. And this is nothing but the tensioner. We slide that up after we slide it in and we just use this to tension the lock. Again, when we look in here, this is almost scary. I, I messed with it for two weeks before I actually hired a local locksmith to give me some lessons on how to use this thing because they don't come with instructions. So let's take a look at what we have. We have, again, we have two controllers. Let's just work with the bottom one to, for clarity. You notice when I have these all the way in, both of those little prongs, these little guys, are lined up on that curve with wafer number 10, or with line number 10. Well, we've got one through 10. We know it has 10 wafers, so logically those are indicating where our wafer positions are. So in this case, when I slide him up to here, I, he, the, the little winglet is now positioned on wafer number five, and that's the guy that I'm manipulating. Not only can I tell that I'm manipulating wafer number five, but if you see these sideways lines, numbered one through five, that tells me how deep I have him set. So in terms of decoding, once we get him picked, that's exactly how you decode it. You just measure it, find out how, what the depth of the cut is on each of the wafers, write it down, and you can get a new key cut. Very cool. That is all there is to it, guys. So let me, rather than keep flapping my lips about this thing. Why don't we go ahead and clamp up this lock? This is one tool. Not only does it take finesse, it is kind of a precision instrument. Uh, it also takes two hands. So I'm going to put this in the vise. We're going to pretend it's in a car door, and I'll show you how to use the leashy peak, and you don't have to pick, and you don't have to suffer through the same six weeks of misery learning curve that I went through. All right, this is a slightly different angle, but I wanted you to see the top of the pick. So that's where all the action is. So the first thing you want to do is take and pull all of your actuators all the way out. And that'll make it easier for you to insert it. Just insert it and push until 
it doesn't go anymore. This is important because it's, if it's not all the way to the rear, the little, those little flags won't align properly, won't index onto the marks that are on the pick. So all the way in, jiggle it back and forth, and we'll double check it in just a minute. Uh, once you get it in there, take your tensioner and just fold them up out of your way. Trying to work around things here. And that would expose everything. Then what you want to do is just take both of your picks, pinch them together, and slide them straight forward all the way in. And this is where you verify. You want to make sure these little prongs on both sides line up with wafer number 10. If they're aligned up here somewhere, that's a good indication you didn't insert the tool far enough. So you might as well get it right from the get-go. All right, I'm not going to be tensioning this right away. I mean, I'm going to be tensioning out of frame uh, on, on the tensioner. But what I want to do first, before we apply any tension, I want to find out which of the wafers are actually live and which ones are not. So I'm going to use both of these actuators here. Uh, the bottom actuator, when I push him to the right, he's actually pushing the bottom one to the left. And likewise, when I push the top one to the left, he, he's pushing the top wafers to the right. So let's start with the bottom one on uh, wafer number 10. Well, when I push against it, you notice it's springy. And when I try the other one, it's dead. There's nothing resisting on the top right only on the bottom left, and it's, it's given feedback with a spring. That tells me that the bottom left rearmost wafer, number 10, is a live wafer. Now let's go ahead and check the rest of them. Let's check 9. Same thing. It's not quite square in there, but you can see how it's springing it back. So 9 is good. When I go to 8, it's dead. So let me double check here. Okay, so the wafer 8 is live, but he's on the top right. Let's go to 7. Same thing. 7 is top right. Let's go to 6. Okay, it's dead on the top right, but we go to 6 on the bottom left, and he's live. 5, bottom left, he's springy, that's good. We go to 4, it's dead on the bottom left, but on the top right, it should be a little bit of springy there. 3, springy on the top right. Go to 2, and it's dead. And let me just go ahead and check 1. So 1 and 2 are dead on the top right, so on the bottom left, they should both be springy, and they are. Okay, so you should make a little chart, and I do it like this. You can remember it. I don't know if this is even focusing, but just, you got your top left, right, just kind of mark where they are, or you can just get the feel for it, which is kind of what I've done over time. But when you start out, it's easier to have a chart. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to reach, you can't really see it, but I'm using this finger out of frame. I'm tensioning it counterclockwise. So you can see the face of it flexing just very slightly, it is a very delicate tool, so it doesn't take a lot of tension. If you find yourself forcing something, you're wrong. Don't do it. You're going to end up bending or breaking one of those delicate flags. So just a tip. All right, so let's start. Let's start with wafer 10. We know it's on the bottom left, so let's use the right actuator. So apply a little tension, and then he's still springy. Move to 9. Okay, I'm getting some resistance, so I keep pushing until I get a click. or I run out of room. Now you notice I pushed him all the way to the deepest cut. He's completely dead now. He's completely compressed, but I got no feedback, no spring tension, no nothing. That tells me that number nine is probably the deepest cut. So let's keep going. Number eight, we're gonna skip eight. We're gonna skip seven. We're gonna go to six. Let's see what he's got. Okay, he's still springy. Five is still springy. Four, three is on the other side. Number one, or number two, still springy. And number one, I'm getting some strong resistance from one. So again, I'm going to not too much pressure. If you find yourself really flexing it, you're going to have to lighten up on your tension finger. Do not force these tools. I'm lightening up a little more. Okay, there's every possibility that number one is already set, and I'm trying to force him. So I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to Start with the other side, so 10 and 9 are done already. Let's go to 8. He's still springy. Number 7. 6. Oh, no, 6 and 5 are the other side. Number 4. Springy. 3. Still springy. And then 2 and 1 on the other side. All right. I may have to go back to 1 because he's really the only binder. Those two are good. Go to 6. Still springy. Five is still springy, four, three the other side, two still springy, and one is the only binder I have. I have no choice. So I'm going to lighten up on my tension even more. 
And you may hear something pop as it releases, which just means I got them out of sequence. So lighten up on the tension. Oh, that's a little much. But I did feel a slight turn on the core, and he's still a little bit springy, but I'll, I will take it. All right, let's push him back. Let's try the other side now. Let's go to eight. Okay, eight. I just felt a click. He's still a little bit springy, but I felt a turn on the core, so I'm going to keep it. I'll go to seven. Still a little springy. And there we go. We got to open. How easy was that? It's not really that difficult. You just can't bully it. You can't force these little levers or you end up either oversetting, which means you got to completely reset the lock and start again, or it means you broke off one of those little tips. And you really don't want to do that at the cost of these things. All right, after you got the lock pick would be a really good time to decode it if you need a key. And this tool lets you do that as well. Uh, I have the same lock and we're going to use the same scale. So we have all the wafers listed along the top here one through 10. And then we also have the depth of cut here. So all we need to do is write this down. So let's use the bottom left one first. And all you do is because the wafers are no longer spring loaded, they're locked in position. As soon as you push up and it stops, that tells you what the depth of cut is. So on wafer 10, we have a depth cut of two. And on nine, we have a cut of one. Uh, eight and seven, if you recall, are on the other side. So we're going to move over here and Looks like eight is also depth cut of one. Seven is a cut of two. Six is on this side. Six is a depth cut of, looks like three. Five is a depth cut of three. Let me check that one again. Okay, that was a depth cut of four, sorry. Six is depth cut of four. Five is a depth cut of three and then Four and three were on this side is a depth cut of three. Wafer three is a depth cut of four. And wafer one, uh, two is a depth cut of four. And one is a depth cut of two. That's how easy it is. You write that down, take it to a locksmith, or if you're lucky enough to have one of those high dollar machines, you can cut your own key and it should look something like that. All right, guys, if you'd like to win this stuff, too easy. All you got to do is go to the website. I'll superimpose it right there. And with a little bit of luck, next week my webmaster will draw your name to be the lucky winner of this Lishi lockpick tool, the HU101. And I'm also going to throw in the Ford Focus automobile practice lock. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. Hold on. Before you leave, click that subscribe button. And while you're there, click that notification bell as well. If you'd like to be a sponsor, click there, and for five bucks a month, you get all kinds of benefits. If that's not enough free stuff, hit the Lock Lab. We've got a self-paced lockpicking course with over a dozen modules at the bottom of the page. Join the tribe. Subscribe.